Problem two, we want to know what happens when there is a $1 tax on farmers. We want to know the new equations for supply and demand and also the new equilibrium that comes about from that. So first of all, what happens if there's a $1 tax on farmers? Well, the people who are demanding apples, the demanders, they're still going to pay the price of P dollars. But then what about the farmers who have to pay that tax? They are the suppliers, and they're not going to receive the P dollars anymore. Now they only receive P minus one dollars because the demanders go and they pay P dollars and the farmers have to give a dollar to the government and they only keep P minus one dollars. So if the demanders pay four dollars, one dollar goes to government, suppliers keep three of it. So from the demand perspective, nothing has changed. We're still paying P dollars for apples. We don't care how much that money goes to the government or to the farmers or to anyone else. So our new quantity demanded is the old quantity demanded. 800 minus 100p. So the quantity supplied on the other hand, something has changed for us. We're not getting p dollars anymore. We're only getting p minus one dollars. So for the new quantity supplied, where we used to have P dollars, we're going to put P minus 1 in parentheses. And then we need to simplify that. Anytime you've got something in parentheses like that, you can distribute whatever's out of it next to it. That gives us 200 P minus 200 minus 100. And then we can combine like terms. Minus 200 and minus 100, they're both minus. They add up to give us a bigger negative. We've got 200p minus 300. That is the new quantity supplied. That's the new supply curve. And then for the new equilibrium, well, anytime we want to find equilibrium in economics, we set the quantity supplied equal to the quantity demanded. So we're just going to set these two equal to each other and then do the algebra. So, new quantity supplied, 200p minus 300, equals the new quantity demanded, which is still 800 minus 100p. And solving this will be very similar to that last problem we solved this way. We need to start writing all the p's on the same side. I'm going to say plus 100p, because that will cancel those out. And whatever we do on the right side, we have to do on the left side. Plus 100p there. 200 plus 100 is 300p. So 300p minus 300 equals 800. And then from there we need to get that p by itself. So next up we're going to get rid of this minus 300. To get rid of minus 300 we use its opposite plus 300. So 800 minus 300 gives us 1100. Those 300s cancel out. We just still have that 300p. And then from here, to get p by itself, we need to get rid of that 300 there. That's basically times 300. So we divide by 300 to get rid of times 300. Those cancel out. And here it would be nice to have a calculator. This ends up giving you an ending price of $3.67. I'd assume that you would round this to the nearest cent. So we're most of the way done. We've got our equilibrium price. Now we just need to get our equilibrium quantity. So to do that, we just take this 3.67 and we plug it into whichever equation we feel like because these should both give us the same thing. I'm going to plug it into the quantity demanded. So 800 minus 100 times 3.67. Remember, this is its own part, looking for the quantity now, not for the price. So 100 times 3.67, that is 367. 
800 minus 367. This is where a calculator would be nice, but that ends up being 433. And that's our equilibrium price and our equilibrium quantity. Almost done. We've got our equilibrium price or equilibrium quantity. Next thing is we've got to make sure we remember what exactly this equilibrium price means. So remember, the price is 367. That's how much the demanders are going to pay. When you go and buy an apple, it's now going to cost $367. But what happens to the farmers, remember, they only get P minus 1. So the farmers, the suppliers, they're going to receive that minus a dollar tax. And they're only going to receive 267. So demanders are going to pay 367. Suppliers are only going to receive 267. And that's for all 433 apples that'll get sold. And that is problem two.